Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with another Lightroom edit for you guys. In this episode, we're going to be taking this JPEG image and we're going to turn it into one of those cool, super bright vintage images that are becoming all the rage among you youngsters in uh, in photography these days. So let's get started. I'm actually a youngster too. So um, anyway, let's get started. We're going to take this image and this this was actually shot uh, raw. What we did was, since this image wasn't delivered to the client, we exported it as a JPEG, and we save our JPEGs as what we call exported rejects. So we zero them all out, and then we save them out so that we actually have them just in case we need them. So I thought it'd be cool to actually work on a JPEG image uh, versus a raw image, and just show you guys a little bit of the difference. So let's get started. We're going to start first by just going over a little bit of the image details. This was another image that was shot out in Laguna Beach. I'm going to hit I to pull up my uh, settings. This was shot in a 5D Mark II at uh, 1 500 a second, 5.6, and 1600 ISO. Probably could have dropped the ISO. This was shot by uh, one of our studio uh, photographers. Probably could have brought it down to 800 ISO at 5.6, and that would have been fine too. But because it's so bright out, you're really not going to be able to notice it anyway. And because we're going to turn it into a vintage image, the grain is fine. Not a big deal. It was shot on a 24 millimeter prime lens. And uh, let's get started with the rest of it. So I'm going to hit I. We're going to hit F twice to maximize our screen real estate. And uh, let's get into this. So with a JPEG, you're going to have a little bit less control, actually a lot less control uh, than you would over a raw file. You have a lot less information to be working with. So the adjustments that we're going to be making are going to have a much larger effect than they would with a raw image. And you guys will see exactly what we mean in a second. Let's get started with our biggest adjustments first. And the first thing I'm noticing is the crop. So I want to fix the crop a little bit uh, just so it's a little bit more straight. And uh, right about there is fine. Going to move this over a little bit too so they're kind of more on that third line. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with our next biggest adjustment of temperature. Now, notice this I hit shift and hit plus up to add 20 to my uh, temperature. On a raw file, this would be completely fine, but uh, because raw file, you're going by degrees of, of temperature. Um, so hitting shift up only takes you up 200 degrees. On this, this took me plus 20 temperature, which is a huge adjustment for a JPEG. So we need to bring this down. So you'll notice that these changes that we're making are going to be much larger changes. Um, let's add just a tiny bit of reds to it as well. I'm going to add a little bit more. And this is going to be a vintage image, which is why I'm making it a little bit more, uh, just a little bit more uh, warm on this side. I'm going to add a tiny bit of recovery just to pull down my recovery a little bit. We're going to pull down the exposure just a little bit. And then uh, we're going to add a little bit of fill light and then add some blacks to the image. Now I don't want to go too much because again we're going to make uh, this into a vintage image and I want to have control over most things in my tone curve. So let's leave it right there for now and we'll revisit it when we need to. Let's go over to our clarity. I'm going to boost clarity. Once again there's another adjustment that has a much stronger effect over a JPEG image than it does over a RAW file. I'm going to also boost my vibrance up and then we're going to grow, go down. I'm going to shrink up my basic and we're going to go down to our detail. I'm going to zoom in, increase my sharpening. Once again, I don't need to go as high. Default would be 70. Let's go. To, let's show you what default would be. 70, uh, 1.530, and that's too much for this image. So I'm going to pull it back. I'm going to pull it back down to about 50, 1.3, 20. So you want to set up, if you guys are setting up like presets and stuff, set up a different preset for like your general settings for a JPEG versus a RAW file. Let's visit our lens corrections. Let's just check out the vignetting. Um, I think it's fine right here. I might pull it down just a tiny bit just so I can balance out the tones. I want the tones to be even from edge to edge. And it looks like at 20, uh, negative 20 and then the midpoint 30, it looks pretty even right there. All right, let's get to our vintage uh, application. So we're going to start with our split toning. Once again, we're adding our yellows. We could actually leave it right here if you wanted to just have yellows in it. But I do want to add my blues into my shadows just a little bit. So we're going to add it to about right there. We're going to make this a really bright poppy image. So what we're going to do, actually not poppy, but faded. So what we're going to do is go up to our turn, tone curve. We have this set to linear curve, so it's reset. We have our click to, uh, to stop editing point curve selected, so that that way we're not editing by region. We want to be able to edit individual points. So I'm going to click up on this shadow. We're going to pull it up and just increase our brightness uh, in those shadows. Whoops, I keep uh, going too far, and then it keeps resetting. All right, I'm going to pull back down the mid-tone shadows. And then in the mid-tones, I'm going to pull it down. And what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to bring it back up when it gets to our highlights. And whoops, I actually, sorry. I'm going to hit Cancel, and I'm going to remove this last point by hitting Control-Z. And I'm going to get that, whoops, I, keep, I need to grab that highlight thing. There we go. 
Okay, so I'm actually going to boost the highlights in this because you'll notice on a lot of vintage images um, when they fade, the highlights actually get more blown out. And so we're going to actually increase the highlights on this image versus actually reducing them. Uh, let's pull the midtones actually up a tiny bit and let's pull the midtone shadows down a little bit just to kind of give a little bit of shadow detail, uh, kill the shadows a little bit more. And we'll pull these super deep shadows just up to kind of kill some of that contrast. Oops, too much. That's great. All right. So notice what we've done with the tone curve. We've kind of pulled out the shadows up more, or pulled the highlights up more, pulled the shadows up more, and then increased overall brightness by bringing these mid-tone shadows and mid-tone highlights out past the edge. So now that we've done this, we can go back to our basic, and we can add a little bit of finishing touches. So we can add a little bit extra contrast if we want. This is what all the kids are doing these days, including myself. Uh, we can add a little more blacks. I'm not going to add too many more blacks. It looks fine right there. But what we can do is we can pump up the vibrance and then uh, reduce the saturation a bit. And that gives it that kind of reverse saturated look where these stronger colors, the reds and the greens, really have that poppy look. But then the rest of the colors are kind of muted. I'm going to take it down to plus 60 and the negative 20. We can see if we want a little bit more contrast. I think it looks fine right there. This looks pretty cool. You can play with your temperature a little bit to get it more yellow if you want or more on the pink side if you want. But I think it looks great right there, guys. And uh, we're going to call it good. I'm going to save this out as a new snapshot. We're going to call it vintage. We'll call it bright vintage edit. And let's check out the before and after by hitting backslash. So here's our before uh, JPEG file. Here's our after file. You can see we've done a really nice job of just kind of creating that super bright vintage image from just that basic JPEG file. So one last thing I might want to do this image, which I think would be a cool effect, is just to take an adjustment brush and do a little bit of uh, detail enhancement over this building and, and kind of like all the leaves and stuff like that. So all we're going to do is hit Alt, reset it out. I'm going to take my clarity up. I'm going to take my sharpness up. And then we're going to obviously adjust this down in a second, but we're going to just kind of amplify all of this. And then I'm going to remove it from them because I don't want their skin all crazy gnarly. Um, actually, I'm just going to remove it from their skin because I do want their clothes and stuff to be enhanced as well. So just pull it off the skin. If I were uh, going to blow this up, I would probably zoom in and make sure that these uh, this mask is a little bit more accurate. But since it's we're not going to blow it up, I'm just going to make it kind of general. Uh, if you want to make it more accurate, just uh, go back in and, and add it back. Shrink your brush down, zoom in, and just kind of add it back around the head and stuff like that to make it more, more of an accurate uh, mask. We can check out our mask real quick by hitting O. There is our mask. We've covered uh, up the skin. Actually, I'm going to make sure I, my legs aren't covered up with my mask. Okay, I'm going to hit O again. And uh, let's see, we're good. So now we're just going to make the adjustment to where I want it. I want to pull up the clarity to about plus 60. Let's pull up sharpness about 29. Let's go up a little bit higher in clarity. And let's zoom in. Let's check it out. Just make sure we don't have any craziness going on with any fringing or any crazy uh, grain that we added. Let's check it out by hitting the uh, turn off button. So there's the off. Here's on. It does a nice job of just really making those details pop in the image. And let's right click on the snapshot. And we're just going to hit update with current settings. So once again, here is our before. We're going to hit backslash again. Here's our after. And now it kind of has that detail enhancement to it. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and we'll see you guys with the next one.